In this lecture, presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to be taking a problem submitted to us by one of our users. Now this problem, we're supposed to find the minimums, maximums, and inflection points of the following function, f of x equals, in parentheses, 3x squared plus 2x, all times e to the negative x. Now in doing any of these problems, we're always going to need our first derivative and our second derivative. And by finding these, we can then set up tables to determine whether our slopes are increasing and decreasing. I'll go in and explain that in further detail as we get in. But first, let's find our first derivative. Um, excuse me, I'm going to switch to a different color quickly. All right, first derivative, f prime of x. This is going to be product rule, and then we'll need to use chain rule on our e to the negative x here. This will give us 6x plus 2 e to the negative x plus 3x squared plus 2x. This will be minus e to the minus x by using our chain rule. We can then distribute out our terms and combine everything. I've worked things on paper, so I'm just going to skip that step, but you can work it out for yourself. And this will be equal to negative 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. It's kind of ugly. 4x plus 2 e to the negative x. And then we can do the same thing for our second derivative. We'll use our product rule and then we'll use our chain rule on the e to the negative x. And I'm going to skip doing that, but... Again, it's something you can work out for yourself fairly easy. This will be 3x squared minus 10x plus 2 e to the negative x. So we have our first derivatives, we have our second derivative. Now, what do we do? Now we find the zeros of our first derivative. And why do we do this? Our first derivative shows us what our slope is. So when we're above the x-axis, we have a positive slope this is f prime of x, and this is f of x. When we're above the x-axis on the first derivative, we have a positive slope, which means wherever our graph is located of f of x, it's going to be increasing. And whenever we cross into the negative axis here, that means we have a negative slope, which means our f of x must be decreasing at that point. Because obviously this is going down, this is going up, and the first derivative tells you what the slope is. It doesn't tell you if it's curving or what else is going on. It just tells you whether you're increasing or decreasing on your function. And your second derivative does the exact same thing on your first derivative. And what it ends up doing on your function f of x is if you have a positive second derivative, then you're going to be increasing in your increasing. So not only are you going to be increasing, but you're going to be increasing faster and faster. So that's what we call concave up. And if you have a negative second derivative, it's going to be the same story. You're going to be decreasing. So if you were increasing, you're going to be increasing less. And eventually you're going to start decreasing, and then you're going to decrease more and more. So what does this all matter, whether we're increasing, decreasing, stuff like that? Well... If we have a positive first derivative and we're increasing, and then we switch to a negative first derivative and start decreasing, where we make that switch is going to be a maximum. And if we go from decreasing to increasing, we get a minimum. And that has to occur where we have zeros in our first derivatives, where we go from positive to negative or negative to positive, where it crosses the x-axis is going to be either a maximum or a minimum, or potentially an inflection point. And the same story kind of applies with our second derivative too. If you cross the x-axis with your second derivative, that means you're going from you know, a concave down to concave up in your function, which means that you have an inflection point everywhere you cross the x-axis on your second derivative. So the way we actually go about solving these problems, 